everybody. I'm Dr. Chase Hayden. Hey there, Amber Horsley. We're from the Hayden Institute. And we all know we're under quarantine right now, so we just wanted to share three quick things we could do to help our lives be healthier during this time of isolation. Uh, the very first thing, Amber, what do you think it would be? If someone wanted to get healthier while they're on quarantine, they can't leave their house, they can't go talk to people, they can't be within six feet of each other like we are right now, <laughs> uh, what might they do? What's the first thing they could do to probably improve their level of health? Yeah, one of the first things you can do to improve your level of health is just to be active. To And I know you, maybe you can't go out, you can't go meet the neighbors, things like that, but go in your backyard. Go in your backyard, throw on the ball, throw a frisbee, uh, make an obstacle course for the kiddos. So just be active because that's going to help to stimulate blood flow, stimulate your immune system, and help to really balance healing during this time. You know, it's interesting with being active, that is a good idea, obviously. And a lot of gyms, uh, yoga studios, etc., are posting free mm -hmm. courses you can go on. I know my sister works up in Idaho. She has like a, so Shine Fitness does a lot of yep. stuff with kids. And they're doing online PE class every day, for example. And yep. They just broadcast it through Facebook or through the internet and, and kids get around in their living rooms and they do something, right? And you were telling me about a, a class. Yeah, course. exactly. So I know I do Yoga Glow myself. So Yoga G-L-O and they have over 5,000 classes for yoga, meditation, Pilates. Um, things like that. There's countless studios in the area that are offering free or discounted courses. One in our local area for the Houston area is Evolution Fitness. Um, they really gear toward 60 age or better um, age group, but they really are just looking for helping people age functionally well. So needless to say, there are a lot of options out there. Something as simple as a quick Google search yeah. and, and the ability or the desire to at least move a little bit more. The last thing we want is for everybody to pop, plop on the couch and just net, Netflix and chill for the next three weeks. So do something, get out there, be a little bit more active, right? So step one, yeah, be active. getting healthier, be active. Step two, as Dr. Hayden's talking over there about vegging on the couch, what do you do between the vegging and Netflix and the pantry? Am I right? It's going to be often like frequent trips between couch and pantry, couch and pantry. Because what else are we going to do when we're on quarantine? Right. Things like that. So we also want to talk about as that second thing is what can you do to avoid foraging in all the junk food and the chips and things like that. And um, Dr. Hayden had a really good idea about this, what you can do for kind of having another um, difference. Well, it's interesting we talk about foraging because I saw a funny meme on Facebook the other day that talked about, you know, 7 a.m. breakfast, 7.30 breakfast, dessert for breakfast, and then at 9 o'clock was brunch. Then 9.30 was dessert for brunch, and it just went all the way throughout the day because obviously as we're quarantined at home, we're out doing things a little bit different than our normal routine. Normally we're distracted through work or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever our events are throughout the day, but all of a sudden we find ourselves going back and forth to the pantry. One of the easiest things you could probably do to try and help prevent going back and forth to the pantry looking for junk food is to attempt to make something on your own. Now that might sound scary for some of us. I'm, I'm not a very good cook myself. <laughs> Um, but something simple like, you know, getting the sweet potato and making your own sweet potato fries. Maybe yeah. you've never done it before. It's going to be a healthier option. It's going to have, you know, olive oil, cut up sweet potatoes, salt on top, bake it for a while, bring it out, do an experiment with the kids. Get the kids involved, eat something a little bit healthier. It takes a little bit more time to prepare rather than just, you know, going to the chip basket. And, um, you know, something like that would probably exactly. be a good way to, to incorporate some healthier snacks while we're all sitting around munching and watching our favorite Disney shows. Yep, exactly. Um, spiralize some of your zucchini. Just have some of those things, but um, you've seen on cooking channels or you've seen on that weird paleo blog, things like that, that you haven't had the time or the energy to want to try. Hey, you, all you got is time for some people now. Right. So it sounds like if we're trying to be healthier and we're looking for three things, first thing, be active. Second thing, watch what we're doing with the diet or with the pantry and try some experimentation with, with healthier options. Mm -hmm. What would be the third thing someone could do to try and improve their health? while they're on quarantine. Yeah, third thing is still really make sure that we're taking our supplements. Because I know that's one of the biggest things is, um, though I mentioned, you know, everyone has ample time. Well, some people it's like, this is their first time home with the kids being home. And they're concerned about job loss. And they're concerned about all this other time. So stress is one of those big things. And so what I know for a lot of patients, what is the first thing that goes with stress is supplements. And that's kind of an unfortunate tailspin of that because the supplements are the things you should be doing to help to optimize your health. So they should be the thing that's the constant no matter what's kind of going on around. Because oftentimes certain supplements, especially if you have ones that are really helping you and your hormonal endocrine metabolism especially, they're the ones that are key to helping your immune system and your um, nervous system to stay healthy and active during this time. So do you think the next 
best thing I could do if I was trying to make sure my supplements were working well is when I'm running to the grocery store, standing in line to get in, to get the toilet paper and to get the <laughs> eggs and to get the bottled water, I should grab like a multivitamin off the shelf too, or is there something a little bit more efficient there? There's definitely some ones that are more efficient and everyone's slightly different. And so there's no specific protocol. I'm gonna say for anyone, I would encourage everyone to come into the office. We are still open, things like that, to see that thing that's best for you. But otherwise, um, if you're like, oh, you know, it's really not my thing, a really good thing to do is get a lot of um, good quality fatty acids. So getting a lot of things that have DHA and EPA and um, some of those that are... So this might be found in like a fish oil. Like exactly. That's okay. what I was going to say. Yep. So like a fish oil, like cod liver oil, something like that. But whenever you're looking at those, you want to make sure that they're not the cheapest one that you find or that's in the bottom of the barrel because oftentimes those are going to have other hormones, synthetic, antibiotics, things like that in there as well. So if we were looking for a good cod liver oil, that'd be something like Nordic Naturals mm -hmm. or Carlson's, something mm -hmm. along those lines. Um, from a multivitamin standpoint, if you read the ingredients and your fourth grader can read along with you, that's probably a good yeah. bet as something that's whole food based, probably not synthetically derived, probably going to be better tolerated yeah. from a blanket standpoint. Um, if you're looking at the ingredient label and all the ingredients are real fancy chemical words like dl alpha tocopherol or calcium bicarbonate or something that sounds weird that your fourth grader may stumble over, probably synthetically derived. Yeah. may not be the best option at this time. may not necessarily be a bad option, but for a general recommendation, something food-based that says like pears, beets, carrots, mm -hmm. buckwheat, something like that inside of it, probably a better option. Yeah. And what's great about those ones that are going to be having the pears, beak, um, beet, buckwheat, the foods, is that they're going to be much um, easier available to your body because they're going to have all of the other synergists and things to make those vitamins and minerals in those foods much stronger. So I like to explain it more like if you're building a house and you have all of this lumber, let's say, because a lot of big one is vitamin C. So everyone's like, oh, if I have vitamin C, I'm just gonna go take some ascorbic acid. Well, that's great. So ascorbic acid is your lumber. That's all your wood that you're putting up there. But how is the wood gonna stay together? You're gonna need to have um, nails. You're gonna need to have a lot of other different things to keep this house together and to keep it sturdy. So that's gonna be the other things that are in vitamin C that's gonna be found in whole foods. So there's gonna be other different um, flavonoids, things like that to make vitamin C much stronger as opposed to if you were just to take um, beta carotene, things like that, yeah, so or ascorbic acid, sorry. Right, so just like Dr. Horsley said, if something was rich in vitamin C as a whole complex, it would have the ascorbic acid, but it would also have the rutin, the vitamin P, the mm -hmm. vitamin J, you know, things of that nature, mm -hmm. which, like we said, buckwheat. Buckwheat, by volume, is going to have the highest vitamin C content in, inside of it, more so than like an orange, for example. Exactly. But needless to say, those are three quick tips that uh, you can do while on quarantine in order to maintain your level of health and possibly even improve it. Step number one. Be active. Step number two. Stop foraging in the pantry. And step number three. Uh, make sure that you're taking all your supplements to optimize your health. Awesome. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you all next time. Thanks.